Welcome back, future housemates. This is Leafy, and we're back in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. So that little uh, housemates term there, that's what Flop and I are considering calling our viewers and subscribers. Uh, so Bleak House is going to be one word spelled B-L-E-A-K, no space, and then a capital H-A-U-S, house. So our friends and viewers would then be housemates, H-A-U-S-M-A-T-E-S. -E Let me know what you think of that. Uh, we're open to, to, to suggestions for other terms. Uh, we want to avoid using things like uh, army. You know, We don't want bleak army. That, that sounds a bit weird. We're going to avoid that. <clears throat> so in any case, we are back with Nietzsche uh, charting her rise to level 70, uh, her rise to power, and we're going to go right back in here. <clears throat> so I haven't done any uh, playing around with this character since the last video, so we will be right where we left off with her. Uh, we're going to do some equipping, and then we're going to go ahead and try out a Nephilim Rift. Hopefully this won't be biting off more than we can chew. We saw with the Butcher, it took us a little while to defeat him. And so one of the um, uh, Rift Guardians might be equally problematic, but hopefully not more so. All right, let's look at some inventory. So we got some nice uh, rare items, which are probably going to be way better than what we have. We have these, which are supposed to be pants. Um, I don't think they are. They look like magical stockings and boy shorts, but they're better than nothing, so on they go. Let's see, in terms of shields, this is obviously way better. Uh, this is more way better, so we're going to put that on for now. Here's a one-handed axe, way better. So, for the time being, we're going to go with a sword and shield build, which I don't like for reasons that I mentioned in the first video, but we'll do it until uh, the gear starts being a bit more uh, consistent in... not consistent, that's the wrong word. Till the gear is just better, really. Okay, so that is our equipping. We didn't get any new skills because we didn't level up after beating the Butcher. So we're going to go into the Nephilim Rifts. So, because this character is not yet level 70, we cannot do greater Rifts. Um, so that means no unique gems, no upgrading unique gems, no purple orbs. Uh, we'll have orange orbs. In the upcoming patch 2.4.0, they've made a bunch of changes according to the patch notes to these rifts. Uh, some of those changes have to do with how quickly you can proceed through them. Because, be quiet, because um, the mobs will be not as tough in terms of their hit points, and the orbs that you get from defeating the unique uh, monsters and uh, blue packs will give you more progress on your bar there. So, in the Nephilim Rifts, you aren't being timed. So you can take your sweet, uh, you can operate at your leisure in killing things. Um, and additionally, you do get loot from uh, the random monsters you kill, and there are chests and that sort of thing, which there are not in the Greater Rifts. My mind. All right, here I go. Uh, I hate these little sand wasp things. Those can be extremely unpleasant in the uh, higher difficulty levels. I'm going to change this back to the kick here, because that's better, uh, I think, for this point in time. So when you're in rifts, both uh, Nephilim rifts and greater rifts, there are a couple things uh, that you can use to think about the, how the rift is. So there is obviously the tile set. So uh, that is the environment that you're in. There is the composition of the monsters. That is which types of monsters you're going to see. So so far we've seen some goatmen ranged things. We've seen sand wasps. We've seen spiders. We've seen scarabs. We've seen some uh, whatever those. Charging beasts are called. I've seen some succubi. So a pretty good variety of monsters. Um, sometimes you get a bad composition. They're all really tough monsters, and so it takes you a lot of time to defeat them. That's obviously bad for a greater. Rift. So these kind of critters are kind of bad for greater rifts because 
They're tough to begin with, and they shield themselves. Um, in addition to tile set and composition, I don't know, I get cornered here. So, in order to knock back, uh, this can be unpleasant for me. So I just have to get myself a way out here. You can see that's the shield I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> so in addition to composition and uh, tile set, I also like to think of the critters in terms of density. So you can have a good composition, but a bad density. Density is good, uh, more density is good usually for greater rifts where you are being timed. You want there to be a lot of monsters to kill so you can get that progress bar up. Uh, it's usually not a problem once you get to the higher torment levels of rifts because they just throw numerous, many numerous monsters at you. The tile set can interact with the density a great deal. In open field type tile sets, um, usually the density is better because there are no um, obstacles to the monsters grouping up, there are no walls getting in their way. Um, so the density is usually better. In a dungeon type setup like this, a dungeon tile set, uh, the density uh, is lower, but those lower densities can still be pretty dangerous uh, because your movement is restricted, your movement, by the walls as well, by the dungeon environment. And the tile set interacts with the composition as well because sometimes there are monsters that have ground effects just naturally. Um, monsters that take up a lot of space, they have large hitboxes, monsters that tend to swarm, they're going to be worse for you in these restricted spaces because they will surround you more quickly. Let's see, so I've talked about tile set, I've talked about composition, I've talked about density. Um, those are the three uh, concepts that I usually use to think about uh, rifts. Um, oh, it's not unique to me. I've heard other people talk in this kind of way as well, but that's the way I like to do it. Uh, personally, this tile set I don't mind. I don't like or dislike that much. There are some tile sets that I absolutely despise for rifts, uh, especially greater rifts. I hate a lot of the Act 5 tile sets for rifts and greater rifts. I hate the, uh, what is it, the Bone Pit? No, what is it called? The under chamber thing where they have all the plague tunnels. Over. I despise that. Um, it winds a lot. There are a lot of dead ends. And so, if you go the wrong way, and there's not necessarily any way to know which way the right one is, you can get lost there and lose quite a good deal of time, which is something you can't afford to do in Greater Rifts. <coughs> Excuse me. I additionally, for the same reason, don't really like the Spider Warrens as a Greater Rift tile set. Um, and I feel like there's one more that's like that that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Uh, so anything that's windy in which it is easier to get lost is bad for Greater Rifts. Um, I also simply dislike the, um, the West March city proper tile set because of all the fire and it's a bit windy too um all the fire so my computer isn't the best in the world so even though it's pretty powerful with all of the effects from my character the massive numbers of creatures that you get when you go up to higher torment levels and the fire animations which are ubiquitous it can slow my computer down a bit and even little drops in performance a little bit of rubber banding can be death for hardcore characters. So you can see, we're not really having trouble here. Um, we're not progressing super fast, but even when we've faced a few of the blue packs, we haven't had much problem. Last time I talked about, or mentioned briefly, how different abilities can be better or worse depending on whether they show up on a unique monster or a blue pack monster. So for instance, Frozen is really terrible on blue pack monsters because each of them will trigger a, uh, a freeze nova thing on the ground uh, at staggered times. Whereas when you have just a unique monster, as with this yellow one here, his minions will not have frozen. So it's much worse on the blue packs than on the uh, 
uh, leader with minions in Monkey. On the other hand, Arcane Enchantment is much worse on the leader with minion monsters because all of their minions will spawn those Arcane Sentries. And when you get a mix of Arcane Sentry and Horde on one of these leader with minions uh, setups, it can get really ugly. Um, so there are some of these monster descriptors which I think are just all around uh, bad. Uh, and some of them which I think are difficult and challenging in a good way. Um, arcane orbs, I think, are difficult and challenging in a good way. You can work around it uh, if you have good mobility, if you have a good gear setup. Um, it's, it's not the end of the world. I tend to extremely dislike the frozen descriptor. Um, there, is tr very, there are very few ways, excuse me, of entirely circumventing that. And especially when there are multiple monsters firing off multiple freeze novas with all the other ground effects in the later torment levels, it can be really hard, if not impossible, to tell uh, what's going on. And then you'll get caught and uh, it can be the end of your playthrough, especially on hardcore. So Frozen is one of the ones that we're going to pay a great deal of attention to when it shows up. Uh, I love to destroy all of the uh, container uh, environmental things, and I love to turn over every loose stone, because in my experience, I have gotten a great deal of legendary items from under rocks, or in barrels, essentially. So, uh, don't be shy. Break everything that you see. It's not like anyone's going to be alive to use them anytime soon. Um, so, in terms of enemy composition, those big spiders are kind of annoying for greater rifts as well because they slow you down a little bit. Um, even if you're just trying to run away from them to get to a higher density area, they waste a, pre a few precious seconds of yours. Now, if we were in my uh, regular seasonal roster starting a new character, things would be going much faster because uh, once you have a large number of Paragon levels, you can essentially power level yourself because you can skip straight to Torment 1, even with a first level character, when you have, oh, I'd say probably 150 or more Paragon levels. At that point, <coughs> Excuse me. The stat boost you get from your Paragon level will keep you alive and let you do massive amounts of damage. So that not only can you survive and kill uh, these various monsters at Torment One, you can do it fairly quickly. And so the XP stacks up clearer. extremely fast. So yeah, when I'm when I was talking about the 2.4 patch earlier, uh, those orange orbs that you've seen me picking up when I kill uh, the rare monsters and unique monsters, those will give you more bar progress on the bar over on the right hand side in patch 2.4. I was talking about my least favorite tile sets. My favorite tile set uh, is the Tombs of Rackus with those destructible. Um, environment things which shoot out little spirits in your enemies. Those I found incredibly helpful, and I've always found the density in that dungeon to be really good. I don't know if that's... I don't know exactly how the programmers determined all this stuff, but I've never had poor density in those dungeons. These oppressors are really bad news. You need to watch out for them. Their fire breath there does a whole lot of damage. They have a charge attack. They have that slam attack. They are overall just really dangerous, especially when they are minions and they have a bit more health and uh, damage capability. So you don't want to get caught in the middle of a group of those when they do their fire burn. So you've seen their charge attack. Uh, their knockback and slow is not natural to them. It's a product of them being the minions of that particular uh, succubus there. So we're continuing along, we're about halfway through this particular rift. Uh, when we get when we defeat the rift, that would be the end of this episode. It might run a little bit long since, uh, well, I'm so low level, 
and my damage is not that great yet. So I have to whittle my, whittle my way through these mobs pretty slowly. These armor destroyers can be bad news when they drop from the sky. Uh, that may only be in certain um, story tile sets that that happens. Uh, but it does a lot of damage when they drop right on top of you. It's not hard to um, avoid. It's just if you're not paying attention, it can do a significant amount of damage and sometimes, in some instances, kill you in one hit. Yeah, I really dislike those sand things. Um, <clears throat> their slow moving is kind of problematic. Oh, we're having a little bit of lag problem here. Um, this happens, unfortunately, from time to time on my internet connection. We may about to be getting booted out of this rift, which is very unfortunate, very irritating. Comcast is the worst. Um, if we get kicked out, I'll just end the episode. Oh, you seem to have come back. Hopefully, we'll be able to finish this before we actually get kicked out. Um, it's just something I've learned to deal with. Um, I don't know if it will interact particularly dangerously for a um, hardcore playthrough. I certainly hope it won't. Oh dear. Um, I really want to kill that one dude. Come back. Blood shards are great. Blood shard, uh, the Blood Thief is my favorite of the treasure golems. His blood shards can really help you out. Um, I am endangering myself pretty stupidly here to get it. Um, hopefully it's going to work out for us. Alright, it did work out for us. Um, so, that's not something you should really do when you're playing a hardcore character. It's going to get you in a lot of trouble. I think we're still early enough in the difficulty that it wasn't a doomed decision, but it wasn't a smart decision either. So blood shards are really good. Um, I will save them up. I will not gamble at all until I hit my character's uh, ceiling with them. Uh, because I want to save them for when I get up to torment level. Because then what you can get changes drastically. And also until I get to level 70 in general. So that I can have access to those uh, special sets. I hear another treasure goblin. Um, the gods of greed are smiling upon us, or at least taunting us grotesquely. That is a gem golem. Uh, gem, excuse me. Uh, goblin. And that's good because we haven't gotten much in the way of gems yet. And we don't have the gem horde of my normal seasonal crew to rely upon. So as usual, the treasure goblin is leading us into grave danger. And as usual, I am going to foolishly follow him. I need spirit. That ability is not yet recharged. So you can see I'm getting uh, surrounded a bit again. Once again, the uh, goblin led me into the clutches of a unique monster. I wonder if that is almost always the case. It's programmed to be that way, but it just happens very frequently. Mage type uh, enemies can be very dangerous if you don't manage your uh, resistance as well. Um, that's why I almost always, with my unique gem setup, go with the esoteric alteration to uh, limit, to reduce non physical damage against my character so that I don't have to worry quite as much about a lot of the mage enemies and a lot of the uh, lore effects that you get from uh, unique enemies. I have a new ability. I have some Tempest Rush. I must uh, no wait, is that what this is? Dashing Strike. So Tempest Rush is the other one that I already had. So there is, of course, the Monk build uh, once you get some high-level equipment, which is all about this Dashing Strike. Um, 
again, we're not going to be pursuing a particular uh, build to the exclusion of others here. We're just going to go with what seems to work in terms of survivability and in terms of synergy with the equipment that I get. We're getting close to being able to summon the um, Rift Boss here. Um, some of the Rift Bosses, I think, are just generally annoying and not fun, not challenging in a fun way. The, uh, the Rat King dude, uh, Hamlin, I just generally dislike, and I think he will be particularly problematic in a hardcore playthrough, uh, because he can trap you in that green sphere, and then, uh, leave you to fight, or not even fight, just deal with that green swarm of uh, rats, ratlings, which are invincible. They're just like an, a moving area of effect damage that can just chew away at your health super fast. A lot of charging enemies can be bad news in um, a hardcore playthrough. So you have to be wary of your surroundings and watch them when they're trying to charge. Guardians, so the Frost Guardians aren't so bad. The Fire Guardians can be uh, very problematic if you're not paying attention because they create that puddle of fire in you, which, as you go up in difficulty, does a lot of damage. So watch out for them, especially in a uh, hardcore playthrough. So there's a lot of things you sim simply have to be much more aware of in a hardcore playthrough. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying anything. That's not a startling insight here. I'm just, I'm just saying uh, commentary as we go here. Because it's true, even if it's not groundbreaking to say. And you can see what I had talked about earlier. This is a, you know, kind of slow build in terms of attack speed because I'm only using one weapon. I prefer the high attack speed type things. Oh good, Vortex is a really unpleasant, um, uh, monster descriptor, uh, one that I generally don't like. I don't think it's challenging in a fun way, I think it's annoying. Um, there's very little way to see it coming, as far as I can tell. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you can tell me in the comments. Um, and it can really just ruin your escape plans, and it's just a matter of luck often whether or not uh, things work out for you. You can get pulled into, for instance, an about to explode uh, frozen Nova on the ground, and then, well, you're just out of luck, really. We've almost reached level 10, which is one of the some kind of um, uh, transformation levels. That's not really what I want to say. It's a threshold for uh, a large amount of new power. You get half of the ability slots there. So generally, the divisible by 10 levels are a big deal. I like most of the Act 3 tile sets as well. It's really, I've only had uh, problems in, uh, in rifts with Act 5 tile sets. Some of the open field tile sets can get very overwhelming, but that's sort of just a matter of managing your tactical awareness properly. Another one of the enemies, we haven't seen them yet, which I just utterly despise, are the Fallen Shen. Um, because they always run away from you, and they always seem to be slightly faster than you are, and they resurrect all of their fallen comrades. It works so hard to kill. Ah. Okay, so this is Rhyme. Um, his, the big thing you have to watch out for, for him are these circles on the ground. Otherwise, he's not really that dangerous. One thing to note about Nephilim Rifts, as distinct from Greater Rifts, is that when you summon the Rift Guardian in a Nephilim Rift, 
the rest of the monsters do not disappear. And as you get up to higher levels, this can be really problematic, because the Rift Guardian will sort of walk you around and lead you into more trouble, especially on a lot of the open field tile sets. Uh, and so you'll have to deal with the Rift Guardian, and then also often more unique monsters of some type and their minions, or at least large amounts of annoyingly tough uh, random bad guys. So that's one thing to consider when you are playing a uh, greater, excuse me, a Nephilim Rift as opposed to a greater Rift, is your sort of positioning on the map. Uh, try and trigger the uh, <clears throat> Rift boss in an empty area, an area that you've cleaned out for the most part, or as much as you can. So you can see, this guy is not producing, is not causing us much trouble at all. Not even nearly as much as the Butcher did. Uh, there are other Rift bosses, so while his frozen circles will do a lot of damage uh, in higher difficulty levels, he is very generally not one of the bosses that I am particularly concerned with. And you can see, we're not even going to get that great of stuff from Rift bosses. We're going to drop some random garbage. Not that picking up those I items is of much help tell. to us. All right, so we're going to speak to Auric, complete this quest to show how much uh, XP we get from completing these Nephilim Rifts and how it's uh, important. And it's a good strategy just to spam these things in order to hit uh, levels well faster. Done, so you can see, I was at about here on level 10, and I almost got a full level's worth of experience uh, at this point in time. So that obviously has a diminishing marginal return. You will not get such a high proportion of the next level's required experience as time goes on. But it's good for getting an early start and uh, it's one of the best ways to level your character quickly. Alright, so that's all for this second episode of uh, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Uh, and until next time, I don't care what you do.